reasonably decent. I had a long weekend, but a, a good one. So my sincere apologies for being late today. Um, I am, as you know, death on lateness, and as a result of me being late today, everyone in here gets not just one, but two free passes on either an absence or a lateness, whichever one you choose. So, yeah. Don't look surprised. <laughs> if I can't follow the rules, I shouldn't make them up, right? <laughs> that's, all right, this is, that's, that drives me crazy. If, this is the difference between authority and leadership. Authority is the capacity to get you all to do exactly what I want you to do. And leadership is setting an example that makes you want to follow it. All right? All right, let's keep going on hacking this week. We are talking today about how encryption works, what the difference is between a security researcher and a hacker, some of the most basic things you can do. I, I call it the, the parental IT situation. We're gonna talk about how to keep your mom and dad safe. And then uh, homework six, hopefully you guys all got that checked in. Looks like most folks have already checked in here, good. Okay, so we were looking up hacking on the internets and the webs and the tubes before I stepped in the door. What do you think a hacker is? There's a lot of different answers to that question. There are indeed <laughs> many, so many different answers to that question. <laughs> okay, uh, best guesses, yes, go ahead Rachel. Some people define a hacker as somebody who steals your information, if they don't really know, like, it's like let's say you know how to download mm -hmm. key loggers and put them on people's computers. Some people Downloading key loggers and putting them on people's computers. Is there some bigger definition of it, or is that just sort of that the baseline that's, right there? I think that's what some people call it. Some people call it. Mm, fair uh, enough. Who as who actually knows how to get, past. get past some kind of blocks and barriers and such. Yeah, okay. Right. And then there was an answer down here. Go ahead. Uh, someone who breaks into something without maybe with permission, maybe without. Someone who breaks into things maybe with permission and maybe without. Go ahead. Another word for a program. Sorts, Another word for programming athlete of sorts. Oh, that's an interesting way. Okay. Show, show off what you know and can. There's certainly an element of that in it. Okay. Any other answers? The answer to that question is yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. All of those things. Um, there is a difference between someone you could consider a hacker and somebody you could consider a security researcher. I am certainly a hacker. I am certainly not a security researcher. There's a difference between the two things in the information security world. One of the reasons we're talking about this, why this is one of the, the, the topic weeks about parts of InfoSec and uh, parts of information technology, is because the security world is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. The, 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 they call it the cybersecurity or InfoSec world has been adding jobs at something like, I think, 20% a year for the last five years. It is expanding hugely. And just like the games industry in Seattle, information security is one of the better ways to go with some career security for yourselves. If you know what you're doing and you love that field, it's a wonderful place to be in. So a security researcher is someone who does what you might call the, the You've, I'm sure, heard white hat and black hat, those terms. We'll talk a little bit more about those tomorrow, but for today, just assume that what they basically mean is someone who does have permission to break those locks and somebody who doesn't. Somebody who does, have, how many of you have seen the movie Sneakers with Robert Redford? And, okay, good. All right, well, new favorite student. Um, so in that movie, it demonstrates a crew of people who break into a bank and then demonstrate all the security vulnerabilities that they found later on in order to get paid. I mean, they turn over all the money that they stole from the bank and said, here's a list of your vulnerabilities. They get a check for it, right? So those people are experts in, um, in electronic and physical penetration, and there's a lot of different people in the security world that, where the, that there's an overlap between just breaking into things, breaking into computers, breaking into buildings, all manner of stuff like that. All those people are security researchers. Hackers are probably a bigger group in the Venn diagram. Hackers are people that are pros, not pros, amateurs, fun people on the weekends, the people that Rachel mentioned who download key loggers and, and that's all they know how to do. We call those people script kitties. So <laughs> it's, a, it's an impolite word for somebody who doesn't know much about what they're doing but can at least get in and cause a little bit of damage. All right, what questions do you have about the, the difference between those two things? Are hackers bad or good? Depends on the hacker. Excellent. What What are the tools that hackers use? Keyboard. Keyboard. What else? Monitor. Monitor. Various, various cords. 
various Can tools. Okay. Software. software, sure. Can other people use those tools? Yeah. Is it the purpose to which those tools are put that makes the difference? Yeah. Very good. All right. So it's the purpose to which those tools are put that makes the big difference. If what you're doing is to help people, at least if your perception is that what you're doing is helping people, you're at least trying to do some good in the world, all right? And there's a lot of variation in the information security world between somebody who is um, paid to expose vulnerabilities, someone who seeks out vulnerabilities and then attempts to get paid for them by contacting the company, and somebody who seeks out those vulnerabilities and holds a company hostage for a lot of money in exchange for revealing the vulnerability or, and here's where we start to get into worse and worse territory, not revealing all of the data they stole while utilizing that vulnerability and exposing the company's weakness. Then we start to get into the solidly charcoal territory of, hacker, <laughs> of hacking, all right? So let's look at some of the, probably the most basic three things that you can do in security that will help you to maintain some security and are probably what I would call the most basic levels of, of personal security. The very first thing is a password manager. Passwords are demons. They are horrible tiny demons and they are almost always the way to get into things. Why are passwords usually the reason why people get their stuff hacked? Because it's humans making them up, exactly, yes. They're predictable and you can watch somebody and figure mm -hmm. out what they are just by watching them. They're predictable, you can figure out what they are. What are the four most commonly used passwords, at least as of 1995? Love. Love. God. What? God. God. Password. <laughs> One is sex. Password. Password is a very good guess, it's number five. One, Secret. Mm -hmm. That was as of 1995. It could have been different now. How many of you have seen the movie Hackers? We've had this conversation. Good, good, good. New favorite students, you're out. All right. So those, the reason why it's easy to crack passwords is because they're not random. People make them up. I mean, a, a solid guess if I knew absolutely nothing about technology would be the name of my cat. Bingo. That's a very good guess, right? And there's a, there's a solid one in... 500 chance that that's my password. Given that you know that that's a, prob that's a probable password for me, a password cracker takes a dictionary list of passwords and starts trying them, okay? So when it comes to something like that, how long does it, once you add a human and their knowledge of another human to a dictionary list of words, how long does it take to crack into somebody's computer? As long as your script can run them all. As long as your script can run them all, but yes, exactly. It goes anywhere from a couple of seconds to a couple of weeks. So yes, you can get hacked. Okay? So what is a password manager? And how do we use it right? Uh, yes? A generator of lists, uh, a list of generated ones mm -hmm. that you keep locked away. Yes, it is. That is exactly what it is. A password manager is a list of generated passwords that you keep locked away. There are several different versions of them. I encourage you all to, as we are talking, look up LastPass, 1Password, and KeePass. Or my personal favorite, KeePass X, which is the cross-platform version of KeePass. LastPass and 1Password have some vulnerabilities, but they're very convenient for people that want a browser-based password manager. Those are tied to the browser that you're using, and it makes a lot of sense to have them there. I personally like to have my password in a separate encrypted database. KeePassX is a really good option. You can store that password database anywhere you want to. Uh, I mean, Dropbox, on your home machine, doesn't matter, anywhere. Now, the key to that Dropbox better be safe, better be secure, and you better keep it someplace nice and quiet. Keep it secret, keep it safe, okay? So the reason I have that is because I have a different password for everything, everything. Now, like many people do, you know, sometimes you have to create a one-off password, and usually that's a pretty simple, easy one that I don't worry about and never remember ever again. But for anything like banks, for email, for anything that involves my actual life, there is a very complex system that I have in place that involves partially randomized numbers, partial words, partial all kinds of stuff that no one's ever going to guess and that is usually above 300 bits of encryption. Okay, what's uh, 300 bits mean? When I say something like 128-bit encryption, 256-bit encryption, what does that mean? How long the password Just how long the password can be. Yeah, that's perfect, exactly, that's exactly what it is. So I go with nice, long-ass passwords. Given that that is the case, what is the most annoying thing on earth to me? 
not okay typing in, in passwords is really annoying yes but what annoys me more than anything else are sites that limit the length of my password to eight digits like many government passwords okay there are passwords out there that are limited to eight digits are you kidding me right now how long in in bits is an eight digit password 64 okay that's like and it's broken that's that's about how long that takes okay all right next piece password managers get one whenever those those vulnerabilities come out like two two hundred thousand Comcast pass uh, customers had their personal information credit cards passwords broadcast to the internet this week if your password was your cat's name that means that anybody who has that list has your password and your email and your cat's name for Comcast. If that's the same as anywhere else, and one of the first things that's tried whenever that information gets released is someone hammers all of the other major sites to get that information, is do you have a, a an iCloud password? How about Gmail or Yahoo? How about Facebook, Twitter? Mostly they're going to be going for financial institutions, and there's going to be a check to find out whether or not you've used your email address or a very common first initial last name as a username for any of the major banking institutions. How many of you have your first name or your first name and last name or your first initial and your last name as your banking username and you're behind a camera so raise your hands if it's true. That's what I thought. At least a couple of you. And with a computer it doesn't have to be a lot to make it profitable to attack that way. All right. So be aware that that is the kind of thing that makes it very easy to find you across sites using the same user information get a password manager and have very different login information for every one of your sites. I can have not just a different password, but a different username, and I do for many different sites. Okay, Just because I have a, a handle commonly on many sites doesn't necessarily mean that that's my username for that site. All right, And all my financial stuff is very different, very protected. Um, how many of you have seen those security questions that they have on things like banking and, and uh, mileage accounts and things exactly your mom's mother or your mother's maiden name how many of you have the real answer to that in there next time try using that password generator and generate a 64 digit long random string of, of small letters and fill that in instead that's what your password managers for throw that in there and while the person on the phone will be like what in the hell is your mom's maiden name you will sit there and go a c four three nine two six j seven Okay. All right, catch up. Four three seven nine J four three, and they're and they're sitting there going, I can't even believe I'm doing this because they have to type it in after you. And you know what? I love doing it. I absolutely love doing it because security on those sites is so broken. Anyway, use the capabilities of your password manager to make sure that you can't be cracked by someone who knows what your the last four digits of your social security number and your dog's name is. All right. It does no good whatsoever to have a password when someone knows your mom's maiden name and your birthday. I mean, you're done, basically, at that point, okay? That's what a password manager is for. Okay, for those of you who are going to be doing any kind of web development whatsoever, raise your hands. Websites, any, excellent. What is HTTPS? Secure. Yes. Very good. Okay. Turn on HTTPS for every site. A plain, I think it's DV cert, cert is like ten dollars. If you are a web developer and do not have that up on your site, and you have any kind of user information whatsoever, then you're all fired or possibly flunked or whatever. I can do in this class. Turn it on if you can. Okay, even if it's just a self-signed certificate and it's free, go right on ahead. It's still a self-signed certificate showing that you care and you give a crap. All right, it'll help. Self-signed certificates are less often taken advantage of than most people think. All right, mm -mm 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 -mm. and there's a whole different variety of HTTPS, just so you folks are aware. We'll talk more about that a little bit later on, but there's everything from self-signed certificates to um, DV to extended validation to wildcard certs, all manner of different kind of certificates. At the top of PayPal, have you ever looked in like a Chrome or a Facebook window and seen a green round bar up at the top, like a big green bubble? That's, that's like the uber-ass financial version of that certificate that says you are swear to God at PayPal. And then most sites are going to have what, for instance, you know, a non-financial institution would have an HTTPS, a plain certificate. 
that just turns that little HTTPS green up at the top. You've probably seen that some places. Okay, that, that is the certificate that most companies will use because that's what's required and it's really what you're needing to use. The, the, the extended value or extended validation one is, is really more for financial institutions at this point. Okay, so turn that on. The last thing we're going to talk about is a virtual private network. What's a VPN? What's it for? Taking your key card home and getting on what? On a laptop. And getting on a laptop and, and getting inside the, the network for the company? Yeah. Yes. Um, it, that is, that's what is, that is often used for, yes. A virtual private network directs your traffic around the standard um, routers and connections that you're typically looking at, and instead it's like it plugs you directly into a network that is someplace else. As an example, how many of you have ever used without a VPN, Starbucks Wi-Fi. Tell the truth, there we go, okay. Um, Starbucks Wi-Fi, any public Wi-Fi whatsoever at any grocery store, a bank, any place in public, on your phones, on your laptops, okay. Exactly. Those networks are in the clear, and what we mean by that is that anybody using a packet sniffer can read everything that you're doing and transmitting on your computer. All right. So the first reason we turn on HTTPS as web developers behind the scenes is to make sure that someone connecting to our sites is not passing that information and we're not passing that information in the clear. Um, in the clear is the binary opposite of encrypted. Okay. <coughs> so virtual private networks are there to shield your traffic and shield what you're doing. It's not just, in, it's, not the, it's not encrypted, it's just directed around it. Someone who's using a packet sniffer on the Starbucks Wi-Fi won't ever see you because you're on a very different network than they are. You can still use it to connect, but it directs you around the, the place where they can find you, if this makes any sense. And it's a little bit more complex than that. But one of the things that I like to do is have a couple of different VPN services. I pay a couple of dollars a month, for instance, for a place in um, like Norway or one of the Scandinavian countries. And sometimes I direct my traffic um, personally, at home, on my uh, phone, whatever, through that if I don't particularly want to have someone looking at my traffic as I'm doing stuff. I mean, let us be really, really honest here. How many of you have phones right now that you've done stuff on that you don't really want other people to see? I know I do embarrassing crap all the time on my phone. Exactly. Think about the, the times that you do Google searches, right? Think about some of the things that you have actually searched while logged in to Google, okay? I mean, you do not want that list just kind of floating around out there, but it exists someplace. So the other side of virtual private networks is making sure that you are using some kind of, of traffic hider. And here's the short answer to that. Get the Tor browser and get the Red browser on your iPhone. There's a version of it on your Android as well, okay? Tor is not super slow still. You'll still spend a moment uh, generating the hops to get you to the, the Tor network. What is the what does Tor stand for? Oh, I love educating you people. The Onion Router. Okay, the Onion Router. This is a network of people that have volunteered to create exit nodes for a giant network that people can jump on, and then when you are on the Onion Router browser, the Tor browser, it's a little circular there. You can look up the question, what is my IP, and you will find that it is in a very different country a lot of the time. Sometimes in, in the Scandinavian countries, they've got very liberal uh, laws there in terms of being able to protect privacy. Okay? I, and, and when I say the Onion browser, when I say, or the Tor browser, when I say um, use the Red browser app on your iPhone and a VPN, these are very basic security precautions to make sure no one's listening and watching to what you're doing. A lot of the time I don't bother. I mean, if I'm looking up like where's the nearest Starbucks, I'm not going crazy. If I'm looking up something that's like, I don't know, weird or, I mean, we all, we all look up weird or medical or personal stuff, right? Sometimes I don't particularly want to have somebody at Google pawing over my data and going, I wonder what she was up to last Saturday night, you know? So these are some of the basics that you can use. You're not going to get your parents to use Tor and the Red Browser, right? But you can get them to use a password manager at a bare minimum. The safest one for parental IT is LastPass. Get them to use LastPass. You can tell them to store their passwords in, in their Chrome or in their Firefox. Wait, is it, it's in both Chrome and Firefox, I think. Um, I don't use it. I use KeePassX. But 
you just have them use that, and that's going to be the safest way because of those 200,000 people that had their Comcast data stolen, most of them were, I think, were using Comcast.net email addresses. Most people that use internet service provider addresses are older and a little bit less clue. They don't, they don't there's, a, there's a certain overlap between people that didn't know there was a different way to get email and people that have stayed on their internet service provider's email address, okay? You should also assume that if you're using your internet service provider's email address that they are gleefully parsing through every bit of your personal data and selling it to as many third parties as possible because it's their job to make money, all right? What questions do you have about those protective measures that I just gave you? Does going into private browsing make a difference uh, if you do Google searches? Does going into private browsing make a difference if you do Google searches? Yes, it does. As long as you're not logged into Google. So you can do Google searches anonymously. They're just not, they, they don't know how to, how to store that information. The reason why you have those browsers, and there's a lot of other alternatives, I'm just giving you the very easy ones to use. What I'm looking for and in, in my life is not perfect privacy and perfect security. I'm looking for an average, much better solution than most people have. We've talked before about Pareto optimality. This is the fast solution that gets you 90% of the way there in almost zero effort. Okay? Does that make sense? Go for the, go for the solution that someone's actually going to use because otherwise you won't use it if it's too hard. Yes, the Tor browser is faster now because people weren't using it. So now we got more exit nodes, more people supporting that project. Any other questions about this? Okay, we're gonna talk a little bit more tomorrow about ethics and the hacker mindset, et cetera, et cetera. But for today, that is your get on your own privacy lecture. Fair enough? Okay. <laughs>